Please note that this video is not sponsored by Animation Magazine. In November 2023, I released a video titled MTV's Downtown Iceberg Part 2. In it, I listed issue number 80 of Animation Magazine as the most obscure piece of media related to the show. For those unaware, MTV's Downtown is a late 90s animated show that centered around a group of friends living in New York City. The magazine's obscurity stems from two factors. It's released over two decades ago, in July 1999, just one month before the show's premiere, and the lack of online information beyond its listing on the Animation Magazine website. The only reason I even know about this magazine was due to the research I did for the Iceberg Part 2 video. While listening to hours of commentary on the promotional DVD for information I could use in my video, I stumbled upon a mention of a downtown magazine published by a company I've never heard of before, called Animation Magazine. This felt like a goldmine as a downtown fan, given the total online absence of any mention of this magazine. At first, I checked the MTV Downtown subreddit to see if there were any mention of it there and found nothing. Then I checked if anyone might have done a showcase of it on YouTube and still there was nothing. Later, I checked eBay for potential listings and yet again, nothing came up. As a last ditch effort, I looked to the Internet Archive website for help and with zero relevant search results, I soon realized I had reached somewhat of a dead end. I wasn't about to give up, so I figured I should just go to the source. I figured if Animation Magazine was still operational, then maybe they might have archived copies of issue number 80. To my surprise, with a quick search on the internet, I found that the company was still operational and their website was too. On the website, I went searching for the magazine and ended up looking through their 1999 archive collection and there it was, listed for $10. I impulsively bought the magazine and eagerly awaited its arrival. Unfortunately, days turned into weeks, then months, with no sign of the package. I felt like giving up, but then one day, out of the blue, I saw it in my mailbox. Here's what happened. On October 26, 2023, I ordered a copy of issue number 80 from Animation Magazine, but as time passed, anxiety crept in. <coughs> Choosing optimism, I tried to push my worries aside, confident that the package would eventually arrive. However, on November 20th, 2023, a member of my downtown Discord server announced that their copy of the same issue had arrived. This is where my anxiety went into overdrive, since my copy remained mysteriously absent. I promptly contacted Animation Magazine, and after a phone call and several emails, they revealed to me that USPS had confirmed delivery on October 30th, which according to my empty hands, simply wasn't true. Fortunately, Animation Magazine offered a digital library, seemingly the obvious solution. But unfortunately, their collection wasn't extensive enough to reach back to 1999, rendering issue number 80 unavailable in digital format. I then decided to contact USPS, and man, was that a mistake. In short, USPS sent me on a bureaucratic wild goose chase through online portals, phone calls, and even an in-person visit to the post office, offering inaccurate and unhelpful information until the trail for the search of my package inevitably went Cold. Frustrated, I sent another email to Animation Magazine inquiring about filing an insurance claim. They told me they couldn't do it since USPS had a confirmed delivery status on the package. Yet in that same email, to my immense relief, Animation Magazine informed me that they would send me another copy of issue number 80. A few days after their heartwarming email, the magazine finally arrived. Huge shout out to Animation Magazine for their exceptional customer service. They are amazing. Two articles in this magazine delve into the fascinating story of MTV's Downtown, a show that pushed the boundaries of animation. The article, MTV Animation Putting Tunes to Music by Harvey Denneroff, explores the origins of MTV's foray into animation. It starts with Fred Siebert, the network's first creative director and co-founder, commissioning network idents from various studios, including Colossal Pictures. After Siebert's departure in 1986, the responsibility for curating and commissioning idents fell to Abby Turkle, who became the director of on-air promotion. Turkle recalls, I picked up from Fred and expanded our net, seeking out more independent directors and animators internationally. Turkle's vision soon led to the commissioning of animated shorts, most notably Slow Bob in the Lower Dimensions by Henry Selick, which paved the way for Selick's beloved film, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Colossal Pictures then proposed the concept of Liquid Television, an animated anthology featuring both serialized and one-off segments showcasing the network's more surreal and darkly humorous side. Turkle embraced this idea, recognizing it as a platform for his creative team to unleash their experimental and surreal creations. Turkle believed that MTV's animated shorts and Liquid Television television content played a crucial role in attracting older audiences, challenging the notion that animation was solely for children. He upheld animation as a vital tool for the network's experimentation, highlighting that some of their most successful shows, including Aeon Flux and Beavis and Butthead, directly stemmed from liquid television, with Mike Judge's short Frog Baseball leading to the creation of the latter. Another advantage of animation was its rapid production cycle. As evidenced by the
the quick turnaround time for shows like Celebrity Deathmatch. Turkle remarks on the short journey from Celebrity Deathmatch being a simple pitch to becoming a fully-fledged program. For Beavis and Butthead, the first season consisted of 15 to 30 shorts produced by J.J. Seldenmeyer Productions. John Andrews, the show's initial producer, reveals that the initial plan was to utilize U.S. Animation's digital ink and paint system for cost-effective animation. However, this proved unsuccessful, leading to the establishment of MTV's own animation studio, MTV Animation, for the show's second season. The article further explores other notable animation projects from MTV Animation, including Eric Fogel's The Max and The Head, Peter Chung's Eon Flux, and the less successful The Brothers Grunt by Danny Antonucci. One of the most intriguing discoveries in the article is the creation of Virtual Bill in 1998. This is a computer-generated version of Bill Clinton using motion capture technology that provided live commentary during President Clinton's State of the Union address. Intrigued by this unique project, I searched online for more information and found only two videos related to Virtual Bill's State of the Union address commentary. One is a promo for a music show Virtual Bill was set to host, and the other appears to be bumpers for MTV's Weird Ass Cartoons Weekend. Unfortunately, my internet search yielded no footage of the actual commentary itself. This has led me to believe that it's probably lost media. The article concludes with Abby Turkle sharing his vision for MTV animation. He wanted to create an environment where creators could effortlessly bring their ideas to life. Turkle aimed to simplify the pitching process and grant creators maximum creative freedom. This is where Chris Pranowski entered the picture, pitching the idea that eventually blossomed into the cult classic Downtown. The second article, MTV Downtown, A New York State of Mind by Harvey Deneroff, delves into the creation of the downtown show itself. It begins by exploring the show's core concept. Deneroff highlights Chris Pranowski's background working for renowned animator Ralph Bakshi, director of films like Wizards and Fritz the Cat. Pranowski cites John and Faith Hubley, fellow animators known for their use of improvised dialogue as major influences. He credits their work, along with the grit and realism of Bakshi's animation, as a driving force behind his own creative vision for downtown. Here are some animation examples that inspired Pranowski. The first clip is from John and Faith Hubley's Kakabooty, which inspired the use of improvised dialogue in downtown. Is that her pajamas? You put the fun baby. She's gonna like look adorable. You. She's gonna look like an adorable princess. She goes to sleep with her underpants on. She really does. I sometimes do too. When the ring goes, cry the river. When the ring goes, the crazy river. Lastly is another clip from the Hubleys, The Adventures of an Asterisk, whose trippy visuals echo in downtown's animation. Deneroff then reveals a shift from Pranowski's initial plan. While Pranowski initially envisioned downtown built around entirely improvised dialogue, recorded street interviews proved unsatisfactory due to the audio quality issues. Following discussions, MTV and the downtown team opted for a scripted format with studio recorded audio. However, Pranowski managed to salvage a key element of his original vision, basing the show's outlandish narratives on real-life stories collected from New Yorkers. He also assembled a non-professional cast and actively encouraged improvisation during recording sessions. Notably, Pranowski embraced imperfections and fumbled takes, appreciating the subtle realism they added to the show's overall atmosphere. The final page of the downtown article features a set of behind-the-scenes photographs offering an intimate glimpse into the show's creative process. The first image captures show creator Chris Pranowski striking a pose at his drawing desk. Next, we see Floyd Hughes, a character designer for the show, diligently working on sketches while his daughter, Safri, sleeps peacefully on his shoulder. The final photo showcases Joe St. Pierre, storyboard revisionist, immersed in his work. Work. For hardcore fans of MTV's downtown and collectors of unique memorabilia, Animation Magazine's issue number 80 is a must-have. It contains fascinating insights into downtown and MTV's now disbanded animation studio, alongside a dedicated article on Disney's Tarzan, if that's what you're into. This magazine is practically the closest thing to official downtown merch you'll find online, besides those elusive promotional DVDs, of course. But be warned, these are original 1999 prints, not reprints. Animation Magazine still has some in stock as of the making of this video, and they've confirmed with me that once they're gone, they're gone for good. No digital versions exist, so if you want a piece of downtown history for just $10 plus shipping, don't hesitate. Snag one before they're gone. Thanks for watching.